Hey everyone, it's Byron. I'm here to testify for Jesus Christ. I was planning to take some time off until I got a bigger video together. In the last two nights, I've had dreams which showed displeasure in my performance. And they were dreams. One had to do with a military general I used to work for. The other one just had to do with some general uh, things of being around people. And I'm getting back on videos and I'm going to accomplish the other videos in stride. So, um, this morning, the big thing that was on my mind is how the church can influence the world and how, not how the world can influence the church, but how the church can influence the world. And it really comes down to if it's a dark night, dark day, if you have a light, flashlight or whatever, and you can shine that light into the darkness, then the darkness dissipates. And that's what I want to talk about right now. I'm going to do it by utilizing the mystery of iniquity written of by the Apostle Paul in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. So this will give you an idea about what Paul was speaking of as, as I understand it. <clears throat> and then also give you an idea of the Christian responsibility in times in these dark days ahead. Dark days that we are in and the dark days that will continue to, uh, to get darker. And I want to start just by reading 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1. I'm going to stop at some point. I forgot exactly which verse it is. But I want you to also know I've done some other videos on this. And some of this may be a little different than the ones I've done in the past. I'll put a link here for you so you can see the ones in the past. But really, we're on. I think we're on the two topics. One is two subtopics. One is that within the mystery of iniquity, you have monkey see, monkey do type business. If you're exposed to iniquity then the more likely you are to do iniquity. So you see, or the monkey sees, and then monkey does. And if the, take the example of people with loud uh, mufflers on their cars, the less police enforce muffler issues, the more likely people are to create more noise with mufflers because they feel like they can get away with it. And not only that person that already has a loud muffler, but other people will be like, well, man, it would be cool if I had that too. So it just grows and grows and grows. So the absence of the police or the absence of the police shining light or uh, making it manifest that problem, then the more it grows. And that would be true with all iniquity. So monkey see, monkey do. That would be point one. The other thing is how the apostasy ties into that. And that's the particular topic that we'll focus in mostly here right now. As long as you remember, as iniquity abounds or iniquity grows, the more people see the iniquity, the more people are likely to do the iniquity. Just keep that in mind as we talk about this other side to it. And here's the other side. Take the police for an example. Let's say, for example, you have a police department. It's fully staffed. Everything's going great. And then suddenly something happens. Morale issues uh, officers get in trouble, etc. Now you let's just say you cut your police force by fifty percent. Well, they ha they probably have a hierarchy or a priority of things that they handle, and there's certain things that they just put down toward the bottom because it, man, we just don't have the staff to handle that. And those particular areas that don't get the attention or don't get the light shined on them or are not made manifest, those particular things are potentially what could grow. So you kind of see the idea. And as they grow, more monkeys see it, more monkeys do it. I'm not trying to make people, make you feel bad about people. I just, monkey see, monkey do is a phrase I've known pretty much my whole life. So with that having been said, let me read the scripture in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And there's a lot that could be talked about here. Definitely the pre-tribulation rapture is addressed here. The, the falsehood of the pre-tribulation rapture is addressed here. But I want to look at the mystery of iniquity in particular. So let's just start at verse 1. I'll read on through it, and then we'll talk about it. <clears throat> now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. It's basically like don't let anybody fool you about the day of Christ being right here on us or at hand. He goes on. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, and that's the day of Christ, the coming of our Lord, that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And you can just put parentheses around falling away first and put apostasy. 
uh, that could be used right there. I think the, the Greek word is apostasia. So, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, that's your Antichrist, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, and that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And then Paul says something that's it's really important. I don't know if it's necessary for this particular discussion, but this isn't the first time he's covered this with the Thess- Thessalonians, because this is what he says. He says, remember you not that, w- that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he might re- be revealed in his time. So I've italicized and underlined the word withholdeth. And if you'll see a little later in the verses, three lines down, I have letteth. And I just want you to know that the Greek word for withholdeth and the Greek word for letteth is the same word. So we have it translated one way and then another way into the English language. But let's just read it all all the way and then I'll talk a little more about it. He says, remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let or he who now withholdeth will hold until he be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivers, I'm tongue tired, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. So I'm going back to the, to the slide that had withhold it there. And Paul told us, remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. So I've already told you this once. But now he says this, and now you know what withhold it. So you know what's withholding that the Antichrist might be revealed. And the thing that's withholding the Antichrist be, might be revealed, that he's already covered in this text and has covered in the previous text, is there's a falling away. But then he goes right into the next uh, sentence as if he's already talking about it. He says, for the mystery of iniquity doth, doth already work, as if the thing that I'm talking about now is the mystery of iniquity, because it already is working now. And I believe that that mystery is when there is not an apostasy, iniquity doesn't abound. When there are Christians, or let's just say police officers, I'm I'm not trying to say that Christians um, act as police officers, but in a certain sense they do because they shine the light. And if a police officer had a flashlight, just say, well, give the Christians a flashlight too and let them shine the light or let them put words on this thing, such as a admonition or a rebuke hey guys you you don't need to do that that's not right that's shining the light now if you're in an apostasy if you're in a point where there's less christians and perhaps the christians that exist in the earth today are fewer that are on track than are let's say a bunch of people say they're christian but one fourth of them actually are led by the spirit of god that aren't somehow off track. So now you're down to a fourth of what people claim or exist, and they're there to pull the weight. So there's, it's like a reduction in the police force. So when there's a reduction in the police force, there's a certain thing that happens, and sometimes things fall by the wayside and iniquity grows up. I honestly think that the iniquity, the mystery of iniquity can be summed up by saying when there is less people shining light or when there's less Holy Ghost shining light into this darkness iniquity will grow and iniquity grows in leaps and bounds because when one monkey sees what's being done another monkey will start doing the same thing and pretty soon all kinds of monkeys are doing that and then there's just an overwhelming darkness you see what I'm saying now that's been on my mind now for a while, it ties in with other things that I've been saying, and, and it t- definitely ties into when you come to that point where you're allowing something to 
dampen your light or to dim your light. And that you could say as a Christian sin, you know, it's, it's impossible to convince me that a Christian can't sin. A Christian can sin. And a Christian can, can go to heaven and sin. Look in First um, Thessalonians, no, excuse me, First Corinthians, about chapter 5, when there's fornication going on there. The Apostle Paul states specifically, uh, turn such a one, turn that fornicator over to uh, Satan for the destruction of the fed, flesh, that the spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord. See that? Destruction of the flesh, this earthly body, but the spirit is going to be saved. You see, all right, <clears throat> so th those things are possible. However, we don't need to be in that fornicating status. That's a weakening status. Just as our position with Christ was weakened, our position with God was weakened when Adam committed the first sin, there was actually skins put on Adam and Eve to cover their sins. Well, that it required a sacrifice. Those animals that produced the skins had to die. And nowadays, we, we know that Jesus Christ was our sacrifice. He sacrificed himself for all. So <clears throat> we can still be saved in Christ, but then sin be in us. And there's all kinds of scripture throughout the uh, New Testament taught, telling us not to sin. And I believe wholeheartedly that we can live without sin if we're walking in the Spirit. But we have to be in right relationship with God, in right relationship with the Holy Ghost. Just because you have the Holy Ghost doesn't mean you're going to walk in the Spirit or walk in the Holy Ghost. Because there could be friction in that relationship. So, anyway, th that portion, mystery of iniquity, the two points. One is, when there's a p apostasy, there's less light shining into the darkness. And then, when there's less light shining into the dark darkness... There's more iniquity not being kept in check. So it gets into that monkey see, monkey do. Before you know it, there was seven guys on the block who were causing noise problems in the neighborhood. Left unchecked, now there's 14 causing pro problems in the neighborhood. See what I'm saying? So I believe that mystery of iniquity, and mystery could just be translated as a secret. The secret thing about iniquity is if it's not kept in check, it gets out of control. And at the point that the Antichrist comes on the scene, it's, done, it's gotten out of control because there was an apostasy or that falling away. There was less light shining into the darkness. So <clears throat> with that reduction in force of Christians who are shining light into the darkness, you and I need to intensify the light that we shine. So that whereas maybe there used to be five people shining light and you were one of those, now there's only you shining light. Well, shine brighter. You see what I'm saying? And Daniel spoke of uh, those that know their God shall uh, instruct many and do exploits. So I wanted to just, just talk about that. That's been on my mind a lot. That applies to me super big time. I'm talking about huge. But it applies to each of us. I mean, some, some people, maybe your, your role in the body of Christ is to pray just like for people like me. Be an intercessory prayer person. And that's exactly how God has put you into the uh, body of Christ. But others of us, we have a responsibility to shine light into the darkness. And that prayer, believe it or not, just that prayer that someone maybe not even know about does bring light into the situation. So that's what I wanted to cover. I'm still going to be working on the other videos, but Lord, I'm telling you something, these, these dreams where it's like God is on me, it bothers me, and I don't, I don't want to let him down. It, 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 you know, I, I know he's my heavenly father. I know without chastisement, I wouldn't have a father. You know what I mean? Like, be thankful that you are chastised, because if you weren't chastised, you would be a bastard. Of no father. That's how the scripture reads. So I'm thankful for that, and you should be thankful for it too. But it's very uncomfortable, extremely uncomfortable. So I'm trying to accomplish all, I'm trying to one get these videos back rolling, which I was out for about two days, maybe three. But also continue to roll on the other video that's coming up. So just realize your portion of shining light into the darkness matters. So I'll let you go.